All right, hosses, welcome back to another awesome video series. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create a reverse shell using Python. So I assume that you guys already know what a reverse shell is if you're watching this video series, but for those who are just curious and you know maybe you just wanna practice with some Python, what a reverse shell is, is basically a way that you can connect to someone's personal computer from anywhere in the world. So let's say that you were in China and your friend in Texas had a problem with his computer and he wanted you to, you know, connect to it and, you know, access it and find out what was wrong. Maybe he had some weird files on there. Well, by default, computers, personal computers, that is, they're set up in a way that makes it very difficult to connect to it directly. So what are some of those problems? First of all, your personal computer that you're sitting at right now, it doesn't have a static IP. Your IP address is not only not public, but it's dynamic, it's always changing. So even if you had the IP address, you couldn't access it, and even if you could, it would just be changing all the time. So it would cause a bunch of problems. Now, even if you were on the same network, then you would still have a lot of these issues because even if you knew the IP address from the, your local network and you can access that computer, you still have a bunch of firewalls to get through from your operating system, built-in security. Um, you know, there's also like port forwarding issues, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, whatever. So basically what I'm trying to say is we just can't SSH into someone's home computer like we can a web server. So that's where a reverse shell comes in handy. So basically, we can't access home computers. They're just not set up that way. But what we can do is set up a server and have the target connect to us. Pretty cool, huh? Now, since they are the ones who initiated that connection, then your operating system says, hey, what's this connection? Oh, wait a minute. You initiated it. It must be fine. So since you initiated it, you have all the permissions and everything is golden. Now, once you're connected to the server, and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do all this, what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna give it commands, and then your computer or the target is gonna look at those commands, run whatever we tell it to, and send back the results. So it's basically a way that we can get shell with any computer in the world, even if it's not a server. Freaking awesome. So if you guys are like, when would I ever use this? Well, in that example, helping out a friend, you would definitely use it. And also, let's say that you were a system or a network administrator and you need to access a bunch of computers remotely, you could do that. And also, one of the more popular ones, although not very ethical, this is how hackers actually gain full control into your machine. So what they do is they create one of these and get you to click on it. Maybe they like hand out a CD in front of like Walmart or you know just send you a USB drive drop it in front of your um, school or work or whatever. Like, oh, wonder what's on this. Plug it in your computer. Now they got all your crap. So hopefully you guys can use this technique to do something ethical. And also from a malicious point of view, now that you're gonna know how they're created, you're gonna know what to look out for and well, you'll be better protected. So there's my little rant. And now what we need to do is we're gonna create two files. So all this is is two files, one for the server and one for the client. So new Python file and I'll just call this server.py. And let me just create them both now. So new Python file, client.py, all right. So basically we're gonna have two really simple Python scripts, this one, we're gonna have running on our server. Now this one is the one that hackers would put like on a CD or a thumb drive. And this is whenever the user sticks it in their computer and runs it, this is the one that connects to the server. So basically two ends of you know a conversation. Now I'm just gonna be running these both on my own local computer to test. And then at the end of the video, I'll put it on an actual server to show you guys that it does indeed work. But for right now, I'll just run them both for my computer whenever we're developing them. So first of all, let's develop the one for the server, the one that's gonna be sitting on a server somewhere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first import socket and import sys. Now a socket, in case you guys don't know, is basically a way that you can have two computers connect to each other or have a conversation. So that's all it is. And sys right here, 
This is basically so you can run system commands, aka anything you would usually type into a command line. You can run it from Python as well. It's pretty neat. So the first thing we're gonna do is we actually need to create a socket. So let me just write uh, create socket allows to connect. All right, so basically we're gonna create a socket on the server and then we're also gonna create one on the client and then they're like, hey, I can talk to each other. Wanna talk to each other? <laughs> well, you know, they're not gonna say that, but pretty much, that's pretty much what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna name this socket create and this is the very first function that we're gonna call. So what I'm gonna do is actually make a try catch or try accept, whatever you wanna call it. And we'll write global host, global port, not to import you fool and global s. All right, so basically we're gonna have three global variables. This one is gonna be the host. In other words, it's gonna be the IP address of where you wanna to connect to. Now remember, since this socket is being created on the server, it doesn't need to go find some random IP address. It's just whatever that own machine's IP address is. Now for the client, you actually need the IP address of the server. So for here, the host, we're just not even gonna fill it in because it's just gonna be itself. Now, again, whenever we make the client, we actually need the IP address of the server, but we'll get to that later. Now the port, I'm just gonna write 9999. If you guys don't know what a port, well, I explained this all in my networking tutorial. So it's basically a way that your computer can identify what data is coming in. So at your computer right now, you might have Google Chrome open, you might have Skype open, you might have, you know, I don't know, some other random Netflix open. So whenever all the data is coming in, it's like, all right, is this like Skype data or Chrome data? Where's it going? Well, the port helps identify which one is which. Now, 9999 isn't a well-known port, so we can just use that for ourselves. Don't use any common port like, um, I don't know, don't use like 443 or 80 or 20 or 22 or 21, whatever. So there you go. So, you know, nothing special. It doesn't need to be 999, but I might as well just make it that. And now this, S right here, this is gonna be the actual socket or conversation between the computers, the server and the target machine. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna write accept socket error as MSG. All right, so we're gonna to try to create this socket right here. Now, if it gives us an error for any reason, then we're just gonna say, all right, take our error and we'll just save it as a variable MSG and we'll just print it out to the user. And I'll say uh, socket creation error. And we'll just print out that error message right there. All right, so this is our function that creates the socket right there. Now, after this, what we actually need to do is we need to bind the socket to the port. So we said, okay, right here, we're gonna allow the server to connect with another computer. And now we need to say, okay, well, give me the host and the port, and we'll actually save that for the next tutorial. This one's getting kind of long, so I'll see you guys then.